Welcome back to the Queen Sessions. We are two brown chicks changing the face of therapy on both sides. Both sides of, of the, the couch. couch. Yes. Yay. Today we are going to talk about what to expect when you go to therapy. I know we have a lot of therapists that pop in, so it would be great to kind of get some feedback and hear what you guys think about um, the different questions and things like that. I kind of wrote the question in a manner of like, like clients that might be asking those okay. questions and then we'll just kind of discuss it from there. Um, but first, I feel like we never introduced ourselves first off. We have stopped, we, we've stopped doing that. Everybody we, knows who we are. You know who we I are. Know, we go. <laughs> We're those two brown chicks on the couch. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ebony Harris. I'm a relationship therapist here in Houston, Texas. Um, founder, co-founder of Melanin Mental Health, which is where our personal sessions came from, um, and also founder slash host of Room for Relations Sex and Relationship Podcast. Yes. Yes. Right. And you also have your private practice. Oh, and I have a private <laughs> practice, Ebony <laughs> Harris, email services, ebonyharris.com. I don't really have a name. You work on it. Um, and here in Houston, uh, where I work with couples and individuals. That's right. Adults. Adults. Adults, <laughs> yes. Um, and I'm Elisa Bokeen. I am a relationship therapist, a sex therapist, um, marriage and family therapist. I am also the co-founder of Melanin and Mental Health, mm-hmm. and I am also in private practice. My private practice is the Relationship and Sexual Wellness Center here in Houston, Texas. And the Melanin and Mental Health, for those that don't know, is kind of a movement that has turned, well, it was a social media campaign that Elisa started. <laughs> That has turned into this movement of therapists that are dope and that are um, culturally aware and want to make sure that clients that are looking for therapists that can understand the struggles of a minority client, right? So specifically Black and Latinx communities, yes. um, we have those therapists on our website and try to reduce the stigma of mental health um, and connect those two communities. Absolutely, Remo- removing you know like that that wall between our community and our profession. Right, you know, right. And so we do that through, of course, social media. If you follow us, you see all the dope things happening. Um, so our social media is kind of cool. That's all <laughs> um, and then we also have our website where we kind of post information, blog, the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, we do shirts. This one says self-care is sexy. Shirts that kind of reduce the stigma mm-hmm. by making it more normal. Yes. And then we have our directory, our list of dope therapists. And we have lots of dope therapists on there. And we're always looking for more. Uh, right now, we're offering the three months free. So if you sign up, you get to try it out. Get some people that contact you. You'll see how many people are viewing your page, how many people are clicking on your website. Um, and so we really want to encourage everyone to sign up for the directory if you have a practice or an agency or something like that. So that as those people are looking for you, because as we spread the awareness, they're looking for people to seek out. Right. They're seeking out therapists. They're right. seeking out people to talk to. Yeah. And we want to make sure we have those people available to them. Yeah, because we keep telling them, you know, about all the benefits of therapy and the therapy is dope, and it is. And so once they're they're there, they're like, okay, I'll give it a shot. Well, where are you? How do I find them? Yeah. Right. So our directory is a national directory. It is a national directory. Yeah. We have therapists. If you look at the map, it's like little pockets. Mm-hmm. We have Houston, of course. We have Atlanta that has a nice little pocket. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jersey, New York has a pocket. California has a pocket. Yeah. Chicago, and then some places have like one or two. So make sure that you're signing up. Make sure that you're telling other people to sign up so that they can find you. Some people, I feel like, they'll be like, oh, I'm the only therapist in my area. I mean, they don't want, they don't want to tell anybody. You can't see everybody. <laughs> so we need to have a variety yeah. so they don't go and just see one person. It's like, well, this person doesn't take my insurance. Or this person uh, doesn't, doesn't work with kids. kids. Right. And so we want to make sure we have a, a, a full directory. Right. Um, with the well, it is also being on the director. It's, it's more of a membership where you get to access all of this other information and you know we invite you to also be on this uh podcast right so that you know you don't have to be local we connect with you and and that way you know again the more people we can reach to let them know about the services that are out there the better right. for all of us right 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 mm-hmm. exactly yeah. so check it out go to melanin to learn more we're continuing to grow the brand the website everything and so we want you you guys to be along for the journey that would be amazing yes so all right so let's get into this topic and yeah we'll talk about that later all right so um today we're going to talk about like i said what to expect when you go into therapy Mm -hmm. um and so the first question is what does the first session look like so for you with your clients what is the first session so, you know, even before clients come 
in, a lot of times, you know, they'll either call, but even with my intake, um, it's really, yes, getting to know the therapist, getting to know what brought you to therapy, um, but it's really about finding out what it is that you also want to get out of therapy. You know, I'll tell clients, I'm very goal-oriented with my clients, and so I want you thinking about how will I know that I'm getting what I need out of therapy. Right. And, you know, being as specific as possible, you know, mm-hmm. it's not, I want to be happy. Right, <laughs> right. So helping them kind of direct them in a way of being clear on what their goals are for therapy. Right. But there's also a lot, so the assessment part and, you know, finding out about what brought you to therapy, what led to it, any previous experiences you may have had with therapy, good, bad, or indifferent, um, any other mental health issues, physical issues it's a lot of kind of getting to know right what we're dealing with what you want to work on and where you want to go right I think it's the same for me um the first session I, I have a, a actual intake mm-hmm. that I use mm-hmm. um and it's kind of I use it but it's not strict right. like if I sometimes I work with couples and I'll say like okay so why are we here that's the first section of my mm-hmm. intake mm-hmm. That could take the whole hour and a half. Yeah. So we might like get through the whole intake, which is fine. You know, I also do some individual work, and so I try to get as much information as I can. But I, you know, I, I do understand that this is your time, and so I will allow you to use it as you please. But I do have a intake that goes through everything from um, what's currently going on to where you're from, what's your family like, what um, what expectations did you have mm-hmm. for like life and relationships, and what is what is have you actually been met with. You know, I try to go through all those different things, but again, if the client comes in and is like, well, I took a bit for like an hour, right, right. I give them that space to right. do that. Because sometimes they, you know, some people don't know why they're coming to therapy. Right. They just want to come and, and figure it out. And so that helps to have the yes. assessment. So people are like, I have things to talk about. Let me use my time. Yeah. And so then I kind of give them that option. Yeah. And sometimes with couples, one of them wants to be here, one of them doesn't. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, or they might have different goals for therapy but yeah that's it's a lot of get to know you get to know your history and get to know you know what you're hoping to get out of it um which i i think it's important for clients to know that that your first few sessions there is going to be a lot of right questions and trying to understand because um it just really depends on what their expectations are because i've heard people express frustration like well you know just kind of like getting a lot of information right but it takes a long some people say it takes too long to get it <laughs> yeah yeah which we understand because right. it's like you're you're coming to us because you're struggling with something right and you want relief mm-hmm. and you know we live in a culture where we yes. want that relief fast yes. it's just and i think there's something it, it everyone is different right yes. so there are therapists that the first session they just sit there and say, well, what, how can I help you? And right. that's it. And then it's up to you. You know, so I think that's, you, you mentioned earlier how you do the intake assessments. And I know, I mean, the phone calls. And mm-hmm. I know I do consultation, phone consultations mm-hmm. as well, just so people can kind of know what to expect. Right. Um, and so I think that's important, like, to be able to call your therapist ahead of time. Oh, yeah. Talk, if, if you have those questions, if you're curious about it, if you're anxious about it. A lot of people are anxious about what, if they've yeah. never done therapy before. They're scared, and so to be able to have a phone call to say, "Okay, what does it look like when you do this? Right. What am I? What should I expect when I first come in?" Yeah, that's an important conversation to have um, because every therapist is different. Right, and don't don't be scared. Don't be scared to call the, the the therapist and say, "I have a few questions," or you know, contact them and let them know I have some questions before I come into therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, they should be able to answer those questions for you. You know, like right. they should be able to recognize that you have some anxiety about it and talk to you for a little bit about it. I mean, granted, it's not a therapy session. Right. The consultations are not a it's therapy. therapy. Right. <laughs> it's literally, what do you need? And this is how I can help or refer you to someone else. Right. And this is what you can expect. Right. And, but it's not, it's, that's not the time where you're going to be getting therapy. Right. Right, right, right. But, um, so what, is there anything... I've had clients ask me before, like, what should they do to prepare for therapy, like the first session, mm-hmm. something like mm-hmm. that. Um, what do you suggest for clients? Like, so they made the phone call, and maybe the session is a week away. Mm-hmm. What can they do to, to prepare themselves a little better for this session? Well, again, I go back to the, to really thinking about 
what you want to get out of therapy. Mm -hmm. And if it's an individual, again, I'll tell them, really start thinking about what will my life look like? Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes when you tell people set goals, it's kind of like, oh. Right. But if you ask them, what will your life be like? What do you envision it like? What would, you know, what would you be feeling like the majority of the time? Or what type of job would you be in? Or what would your relationship, like really starting? Mm -hmm. And I'll tell them, if you can't, like, if, if you can't even see the vision, that's okay. Right. We'll start there. Right. Pick where are we going, right? right? Um, but, and then with couples, I'll encourage them because are they even, a that might just start for them to see, like, are you even able to talk about okay. what you want to get out mm -hmm. of therapy? Are, is one of you coming in because you want to save the relationship and the other one is not? Right. You know, because right. that will also affect what you're going to get out of therapy. Mm -hmm. um, so just start really thinking about, cause, and I'll tell them, you're investing your time, your energy, your resources. I want to make sure you get what you need out of it. Right, right. I think it's the same. Definitely the, you know, I would let them know, like, just think about the things that you want to address and what it would why you have chosen this time mm -hmm. to, to seek right. therapy. Yeah. Um, I think that's a big question because a lot of times people will think about it, think about it, think about it, and it's like, what's happening right now that was like, yes, I need to go. Right. Um, so identifying the, the, the main issue, I guess, technically, mm -hmm. um, as well as I might point them in the direction of some resources. Because depending on if they're in crisis, some people when they're in crisis, they're searching for something. Right. So I'll point them in the direction of like, well, these, this is a book you can look at or these some blogs mm -hmm. you can look at. And so I'll try to give them some resources so if it's a week in between, they can feel like they're doing something. Right. Because um, that is hard sometimes when you, most of the time when people call us, they're like, I need to see someone like now. Right. And like, I can't see you right now, but maybe mm -hmm. in three days, you know, mm -hmm. if my schedule permits, I can see you. Or maybe we'll have boys the next week if we can, you know, so giving them something to kind of grasp into in that moment mm -hmm. is something that right. I'll say like, you know, well, check out this book or go look at right. this blog or I have lots of blogs on my website. You can just check out and see if any of them fit for you and help you kind of prepare for that first session. Yeah. Giving them something that they feel like is already starting that change. Right. Something they can do now. Because mm -hmm. that's what a lot of people struggle with is what, what can I do right now right? Right. to make this better? Right. Yeah. And that's why I think even at the end of our, the first session, I don't necessarily give homework at the end of the first session because I still want to get to know them. But I definitely tell them what to expect in the next couple sessions. And I also, um, I'm depending on the feel, I might say like, well, think about this or do this. Mm -hmm. or something. Because sometimes, like you said, they're like, take it so long to get into the meat of things mm -hmm. and I try to make it where at least at the end of the session you have gotten something from it and there's something that you possibly try in your relationship right. or at home or whatever the case is. Right. Certain exercises. Or, and it also depends on the client because some clients they don't want homework. Yep. They don't want you to tell them now go home and read this book. Right. Or, you know, so I try to have a variety of resources. Exactly. Is there a video? Is there a book? Is there an audio book? You know, I love audio books mm -hmm. and so like, right. you know, if I know that they're a person that's like, I'm so busy, I'm so busy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So can you take five minutes on your drive to think about this and exactly. we'll talk about it when you come back? What you know? can you do? What can you do? Like, exactly. really working with the client, like, what can you do? Because the the reality is therapy works if you work the therapy inside and outside of the office. Right. You know? Right. Um, it's only an hour, hour and a half, maybe. Yes. Unless you're doing, like, those intense three, four-hour sessions. And if you take it, if the therapist takes insurance, Like, so what do you want to use this time for? Mm 
mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. you're here, right? And you're and you're investing in it. So what do you need today? Like, what do you need today? Or or maybe highlight what is going right, right? So maybe now that things are going well, well, let's highlight how that's different than maybe it was going before. Right. And what? And right. so let's identify what led to that change. Mm-hmm. So compared to when you first started therapy, and now these things are going well. So what do you think? What shifted? What yeah. shifted? What are you doing different? So we can keep. And sometimes that's helpful to a client to really like. Oh yeah, well I started doing that, and now this. Yeah, because sometimes clients don't give themselves enough credit. It's just oh, like, oh, right. everything resolved itself. Right. <laughs> so, like, so Never ever. Right. Yeah. So everything just fixed itself, yeah. and that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I definitely. I I tend to have, like you said, I, I do kind of put it back on them. Like, what do you you know? What do you want to use time for? How can you know that this is a beneficial session? Mm-hmm. You know, what would make you feel um, walking on like. I got something out of that. But I also have like certain, um, as I'm learning more about my clients, there are certain things or exercises that I might be like, okay, well, let's try this and let's see how what, how this resonates with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially if I know that you have certain goals and maybe you haven't gotten there yet. Mm-hmm. But I might, if, if you have nothing to talk about, like, and usually after a couple of questions, we'll find something. Right. But right. if you truly are like, nope, everything's good, housework, everything's good, home, great, you know, then I'll pull out an exercise that is more like introspective and something that can help them kind of identify patterns and things mm-hmm. like that. So I have, I, you know, I'll tell my clients, like, your session is your time. So we spend it the way that you would like to spend right. it. And we spend it working on the things that you would like to. But just know, like, if you come in and you're, like, struggling, like, you're like, no, oh, I don't. Or, or sometimes people, clients come in and they have things they need to address, but they're not ready to address yeah. them. And so then I might pull out an exercise and we'll work on that for like 10 minutes and then we'll talk about how that feels and that. And sometimes that brings up other things mm-hmm. that they never even thought about or that has been bothering them, but they weren't going to bring it up. Right. Um, so if you don't have anything to talk about, um, and it depends on what that means for you. Uh, it depends on what that means for you. Um, if you don't have anything to talk about, um, usually your therapist can help you, one, gain a little bit more insight or ask the right questions to get information and or they'll have something that can kind of still help you move in the direction that you want to move in yeah um especially when we're talking about goals Mm -hmm. and what are your goals they'll their your therapist is usually brain is always working on like okay how can i help Mm -hmm. how can i help them get there right how can i pull them in the direction toward their goal right and make sure even identify whether or not this is a real goal or not it's something that therapists kind of work well i know for me i'll help clients like they'll say this their goal and so we discuss like, okay, why is this a goal? Mm-hmm. What's create this goal? Is it your goal? Is it society's goal? Is it your parents' goal? Like, where does these goals come from? Right. You know, those are things that can be discussed as well. Absolutely, you know, and and I think that's why it's so important to be able to communicate from the beginning what you want to get out of therapy because, right. like you said, okay, then I'm the keeper of your goals. Mm-hmm. And so if we're talking about, you know, if we're in session and you are highlighting maybe behavior or choices that from my experience and my training and from what I know about getting to that goal, Mm -hmm. you're not, you know, like, let's, let's talk about it. And is that going to get you closer to your goal? Right. Or are we, is it going to keep us here or Mm -hmm. are we moving in another direction? Right. And if we are moving in another direction, maybe that's because your goal has shifted. Maybe because sometimes when you start there, right, it's, well, I thought I wanted to X, but now I realize I really don't. I want Y, right, you know? Right. And so that's okay too. But again, having some awareness. And again, if you don't, if you feel like I don't know what I want, okay, well, let's start there. Yeah. You know, what's blocking your vision. Right. And um, that's something that you can work in there. True, 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 true. Definitely. So why do some therapists focus on goals and other therapists don't? I think it just really um, depends on that therapist style, yeah. their training, um, whatever uh, model they sort of subscribe to as far as change, right? you know, right. how change happens. And I think that's important. I always tell clients, you know, that I do want to find out what their previous experience, if they had any with, right. with therapy. Yeah. Um, one, what worked for you, what didn't. Um, but I also tell them, you know, therapists were just as different as our personalities. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. even if we did 
you know, share possibly like the same theories or models that we use, we bring so much of ourselves also. Right. You know, we're not making widgets in this profession. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like we're, we're it's the human experience. And, and it's so, the connection that in a relationship that is a big part right, of therapy. Right, right, right. So me having a different personality works because do we connect on that level mm-hmm. before we can even get to theories and things like that? Right. And a lot of times what happens is we choose our theories based on our personality. Right, right. So true. So if you connect with me as uh, probably a more direct person, a more logical person, you know, I still bring in the emotional part as well, mm-hmm. then you might connect more with solution focused. Right. You know, so that it works that way where if you connect with that therapist, then their theories will probably kind of align with that as well. Right, right. Um, but yeah, so it just depends on the theory if, if or whatever space they're working in. Um, I know we talk a lot about goal oriented therapy. Mm-hmm. You know, we talk a lot about like what do you want out of it, um, and focusing more client focused. Right. And and some theories aren't like that. Some right. theories are the therapist is the expert, right. and they kind of help you direct your life and things like that. Yeah. It just depends on who you're seeing. Yeah, that's definitely not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like that's not me, you know, because and, and again, I'm not knocking anybody who does it because there are there are times, you know. You've talked about it before. Um, you know, I've shared before. I have. I, I'm a fan of therapy, not just because I'm a therapist, but right. because I've done my own therapy. And so there have been times in my life where I needed my therapist to be more directive. Right. You know, right. I needed that the, a therapist that was like, you know, gave me like some real direct guidance. Right. And then there, and then it was like, then I was at a different point. I'm like, okay, I don't need that anymore. Now I need the ability to explore Explore. what's Mm -hmm. right for me Mm -hmm. or maybe now and now I need a therapist where I can bring more of my spirituality into it and so that's okay and that's why it's important that there are so many different types of therapists Mm -hmm. because there's so many different types of people (laughs) and I think you brought up a good point of you don't necessarily have to have the same therapist your entire life no because you need different things at different Different points in your life and so that means that depending on who that therapist is, they may have fit very, very well at this time, Mm -hmm. but now that you need more emotional support and things like that, you might go to a different type of therapist. And so I think that's how, you know, it's when people say like, oh, I went to a therapist, it was a bad therapist, or it was a bad, you know, experience. Um, As therapists, we're kind of like, well, was it a bad experience or was it just a bad fit? Bad fit, Because that could be two different things. Now, there are times when it's a bad experience and it's a bad therapist. 100%. There are times when it happens. But like, some what <laughs> zero zero percent. But th- sometimes it is just we weren't a good fit because their style, their personality, all of that didn't fit with where I was at in that moment. Right. And maybe ten years from now, that probably that person might have been perfect yeah, for me. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I think you know, um, just really understanding again that the other piece is sometimes you're in a space where you. <laughs> You may go to see a therapist, for example. I might see a client individually, Mm -hmm. um, but then they're struggling with relationship, their relationship. And so, the way that I work is, I'll say, okay, I encourage you to also do your couples work, but I'm going to send you to somebody else Mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. So you might be working maybe with two therapists at once. You might be doing couples work with one, and then doing your individual. Um, I specialize in sexuality, right? So. I've had times where my clients, um, be it individually or as a couple, maybe as a couple, and they're seeing a therapist doing couples work, but the, uh, that particular therapist doesn't specialize in issues around right. sexuality. Right. So they might just come see me for that specific issue. Right. Um, so, yeah, there's the, we have a variety of needs, so it's good that right. there's a variety of options. And so just because you go to one therapist and it's one way, you can't expect that with every therapist that you see, which no. again is important with having that phone call so that you can kind of know what to expect. Absolutely. Um, and, and so I, I've had plenty of times I've worked with couples where they've seen a therapist and they've seen a therapist for like a year or two and it's been some time and they'll come see me and I'll say, oh, so did y'all address this in therapy? And they'll say, no. And I'm like, oh, see, I never talked about this at all. And they're like, no. And I'm like, okay. You know, and that's fine. It's just maybe that's not what y'all were focused on at that time. Maybe y'all were working on this other things. Mm-hmm. So you, it's, it's, I feel like, I want to say it's like having a job, but it's been a long time since I've had like an actual employer. <laughs> um, but in my head, when you get, go to a job um, and you say your supervisor or whoever, and you just, it's not a good fit. Like, right. You just don't 
Mm-hmm. Um, you may not quit the job because like I like my job, I like everything else, just this person I don't get along with. Right. Then they shift and it's another supervisor. And yeah. it's like, oh, this is a better fit. Right. right you know, right. and so I think it's it's one of those things where it's every it's not gonna always be that perfect fit. Um, sometimes it does, it just feels like this is right. Sometimes it's like, oh, I get some stuff and it's not that great. You know, it just depicts it's, it's all about the personality. It's just different people mm-hmm. doing different things. And so everybody doesn't fit in your life. Anybody that you have a relationship with doesn't automatically fit. And it's the same thing for a therapist. Right. And so if you are a person that like, I need to have goals, I need to know, you know, what we're working toward, I need to see results, I need to, you know, then you need probably some leadership focus, CBT, you know, those people. If you're kind of like, I just want to explore and figure out myself, Mm -hmm. then you might need a more experiential, you know, a different type of therapist. So that's why it's important to kind of check in and see what what their beliefs are as far as therapy and what their practices are. Which, I mean, I recognize, we've talked about this before, sometimes that's hard when, you know, you go through different directories or something Mm -hmm. and you're like, I don't even know. Like, how do I pick (laughs) from this array? You know, like, how do I... I mean, or not even knowing the treatment modality. Right? Like, what is that? What is right. this? What does that mean? What is right. DFT? What is DBT? What are what is this alphabet soup after yeah. this person's name? <laughs> right. You know. So it is. It's 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 a process, and so hopefully with some of these, you know, podcasts that we do and the different you know blogs to to kind of give you some guidance. Yes. On how to go through just the process of picking a therapist and what to expect. Right. 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 How do I know if therapy is working? So, again, I think this is, I, I, saw, I, I swear, I sound like a broken record, but this <laughs> is why having an idea of what it is that you want to get out of it, because then measuring it, you, it, it can't be all or nothing, right? And so maybe what I wanted to get out of therapy was, you know, when, I, when we started a couple work, one of the goals or what we wanted to get out of therapy was we wanted to be able to talk about money without arguing and then not talking to each other for the next two days. Right. Right. So let's look at where we at now we're at now. So now when we talk about money, we still argue, but now instead of not talking to each other for two days, you know, we might be mad for a couple of hours, but then we're able to kind of let it go more quickly. Right. Okay, you're not completely eliminating the arguing, but now you're not staying mad at each at each other for two days. Yeah, that's progress, right? You know, right. It's, it's it's that that's improvement. It may not be the full the meaning full, of your right. goal, but it's improvement, right? And being able to identify that that I think that's that's very concrete and being able to say like when I started, I was here, and now I'm here. I think another, um, for me, another way to know therapy is working. I have a lot of clients that will say, like, I'm more aware. I notice more. Mm-hmm. I'm paying more attention. I see patterns. Those are things that you may not have seen right. before you started therapy. Right. You know, you just kind of go through life and, you know, whatever. Um, and so when you start to kind of, when you're just, I don't know, the awareness of yeah. things that impact you and how you impact others, I think is a huge deal. I, I it, from the, like, when I have clients say, this happened, and then I heard your voice. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I heard you saying, yes, it's in the form of my voice, but it's what you're talking about. It's that awareness that you now have. Right. That awareness of, hey, they're crossing my boundaries. Exactly. You know, or exactly. clients start using terms like, my boundaries. Well, or, I was triggered. I was triggered. I, I, I had to practice my self-care. That's yes. a sign that yes. therapy has rewired your brain and stuff. So. <laughs> right. And that's that's a sign that you are you're using the tools outside of there. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the biggest thing is I know when I for me, my as a solution focused therapy, as a um I was trained to be like a triage, like we help you in crisis, we give you the tools and we release you to the world. Mm-hmm. You know, yes, you come back, we give you more tools, we help, but I'm not a person that sees a lot of clients for like two or three years. Mm-hmm. Um so when you say, I handled this situation without waiting to come to therapy, especially mm-hmm. for couples. Oh, yeah. Right? Because they like to say, like, we wouldn't wait up and talk about it in therapy. Right. So <laughs> when you're at the point where, like, you have, y'all had an issue, you addressed it, maybe it didn't go perfectly. Right. But it went better than it did before, and you felt comfortable in, in handling it, mm-hmm. that's progress. 
Right, absolutely. Yeah. That, that you're able to do some of these things outside of session. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Without having somebody right there mm-hmm. to guide you and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Because mm-hmm. that's the, you know, the goal of therapy. Oh, I keep speaking for myself because I don't know what all therapists do. My goal is for my clients to get the skills to live their best life without me right, right. next to them. Yes. That's my goal. I was telling them, I'm like, I don't want you to need me for like the goal is to not need me. That right. doesn't, and you know, that doesn't mean I don't want to see you. Right. I love my time. It just means, yeah, it just means, you know, you learning how to have the process that you're learning here in therapy, how to process that on your own so that you don't need me. Right. It doesn't mean you can't go back. And, and, I and, if, back. Yeah. and if things come up and you're like, whoa, I need to go back and right. talk, I'm here. But it, it, you know, I don't, I don't want it to be a dependent where you're, you, you can't go through life right without my opinion or right. my thoughts or me guiding you in a certain way. Right. Especially if you come to therapy because you have struggled making decisions for yourself. Because people always told you what to do. Oh, I'm gonna be on you. <laughs> what are you? Right. You know, like so how did you do that? Yeah. Outside? What would you do if I wasn't here? Mm-hmm. How would you know? Yes, definitely. I just like to think of it really as your therapist being that that mirror for you, um, that mirror that's holding up to you and reflecting back either that which ooh we don't like to always look at, but maybe that like I've said before you've forgotten. Or, you know, that which you are capable of doing and you're just maybe not seeing it. But but that's really, like, the goal of therapy. Right. It's, it's not for you. To, it's not for me either. Again, right. Like you right. said, um, it's not to keep you in therapy for years and years and yeah. years. Awesome. So, last question. I just want to know, this is something I feel like we should do every week, is a book or a resource that you feel like would be helpful for clients. It could be related to this topic or just be one that you just really enjoy referring or clients but just anybody that's listening oh one of my favorite books i don't have it here because i have them both at home but one of my favorite because so i specialize again in relationships and sexual uh sexuality and uh love working with women i love working with women who are disconnected from their sexuality be it because of trauma shame um pain you know female sexual pain and so one of my favorite books to to give them whether they come in with a partner or by themselves is emily nagowski's come as you are Mm -hmm. that book i've had clients tell me this changed my life because it does such a good job of explaining women's sexuality and so many aspects of women's sexuality is pathologized like oh, she's not in the mood, or this is that. And it just does such a great job of letting women know you're normal, right? you're okay, right. and it's such a relief to so many women. So that's one of my that's favorite awesome. books, yeah. Um, same, if you've listened mm-hmm. to Room for Relations, I've talked about that book a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also, for um, when I work with couples, um, and I, I've said on here before, like I, I like working, I like working with couples, I like working with women, but I really enjoy working with men. Um, and so there's a book that I always tell, I, I refer to my guys, and I always say, like, it's a little outdated. <laughs> so everything in it, you don't have to necessarily apply, but it has really good things. Um, it's called No More Mr. Nice Guy. Mm-hmm. And it, it focuses on how a lot of men nowadays are starting to grow up in this world of, like, they have to please the women in their lives, mm-hmm. but they're not learning how to please themselves or how to be assertive. Mm-hmm. And so it talks about how it is all these different types of nice guys that, um, consider themselves to be good guys, consider themselves to be nice guys, but they might make not so great decisions in their relationships, including cheating, including um, being passive, and you know, and so it talks about how you can get more of an identity identity as a man, and, and as the man in the relationship, and I say that in a not so as far as like gender roles, but mm-hmm. more of like who you are as a person. Mm-hmm. And being aware of that and then being assertive in what you need and desire in a relationship and not feeling like you always have to please the other person or make the other person or happy or fix the other person. Right. It gives you autonomy and gives the person you're with autonomy mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. So it's a really good book for guys that are struggling, feeling like they're always wrong, they can't never do anything right, they're always trying to make their wives or moms or whoever happy. <laughs> like, it's a really good book. So. <laughs> No more Mr. Nice Guy. Now, I always say, read with a grain of salt. There's some things you, you take, some yeah. things you throw away, but yeah. it's, it's good information. Awesome. Yeah. Love it. 
All right, so I think that's it for today. Yay. If you are in the Houston area, we have an event on Friday. It's a small event, though. It's a so small event. Because mm-hmm. um, we're only allowing, what, 15? Like 15 people. That sounds like a lot, too. But yeah. yeah. Maybe like 15 people there. Yeah. It's going to be a movie night um, where we're going to watch some films. So it's documentary style. Um, if you remember a few uh, sessions back, we had um, ASEC sex therapist, ASEC certified sex therapist, Falcon Benesaw, who is there, Mr. Katie, and she is going to be sharing with us some of these resources that she uses, um, some of these documentary style videos, um, and talking about how she helps couples reconnect uh, when they're struggling with sexual intimacy. So it'll be a nice little intimate, right. um, so we can ask questions and watch these films that, you know, probably right. wouldn't be the best to watch. And a, and a big, big huge yeah. <laughs> and you have a smaller room. Yeah. Um, so, so if you are great it's learning, Katie, right? Yes, it's out in Katie. Great learning opportunity. We're gonna have CEUs that yeah. night. So, yeah. And yeah. if you are a member of the directory, yes, if you are a member, meaning your practice is listed on the directory, you can come for free. We've been saying forever we want to do like free events for members. Um, this kind of events and things like that. So this will be one of those events that will be free if you're a member. If you're not a member, it's just $15. $15. Um, we'll have wine, of course, because that's what we do. <laughs> um, and some snacks. And, and just kind of sit around, and again, you'll get a CEU. Mm-hmm. So wine, snacks, and a CEU for $15. I mean, um, um, And a good discussion about sexuality and working with couples. And you get to hang out with these and brown chicks changing the face of therapy. <laughs> these will be there hanging out. So if you're interested, if on the Facebook page you have it on the event. Mm-hmm. Also, if you go to um, Eventbrite, mm-hmm. search Melanin and Mental Health, it'll pop up for movie night and CEUs. It'll mm-hmm. pop up. Um, so sign up, come. Um, it'll be this Friday. I'm Katie, and hopefully we'll see you guys there. And again, make sure y'all sign up for the directory. Again, a perk of being a member, um, as well as, of course, getting clients, getting phone calls. And we've had an upsurge kind of in the phone calls. Mm-hmm. Um, of saying they found us on, saying the, they found us yeah. on the directory, mm-hmm. which was a very cool feeling. Very cool. <laughs> And I've seen a lot of people that have gotten in contact, people sending out contacts, like, hey, I'm support therapist. Yes. Like that. So, yeah. Um, we used to have, like, a thing in our group, and the Melanin Mental Health Professionals, people, like, share if they've been found on Melanin mm-hmm. Mental Health. That'd be cool. That's another thing. If you're yeah. on Facebook, join the Melanin Mental Health Professionals group. We right. use it as kind of a little hub to share resources or, um, you know, I'll, again, we'll have people contact us. Do you know somebody in Maryland that's a therapist? And so... We always go there. We always go to the directory first, right. and we go to the, the Facebook group. group. So, yeah. yeah. Stay connected Check with us. Melanin Mental Health across social media. Melanin Health on Twitter. Yes. And we will talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye.